Check it out, people. After 12 long months of finding an engine, pulling the engine out of the car originally, finding an engine, rebuilding the engine, buying parts, assembly, and all the modifications, the engine for Project Oddball with the supercharger is finally ready to go back in. At this point, I've rented the hoist. I'm looking for bolts to connect the sling, which will uh, enable me to raise the motor off of the engine stand, which it's been just taking up room in my garage for way too long. So today's the day. We finally get to see if my modifications to the supercharger which is a uh, three inch 90 degree elbow welded to the back of it actually works according to my calculations which means wild guesses I think I've got at least two maybe three inches in between the supercharger and that if there's any massaging of the firewall that I'll have to do it'll be minimal in nature and it will allow me to install the supercharger heck I've even got the uh, the throttle body plumbed and the EGR valve plumbed everything that goes to the back of the intake is uh, set up like uh, like I know what I'm doing or something so there's after getting the engine stand off, I can finally think about putting the flywheel on and getting the bolts out of my uh, bolt stash and hooking that up, getting it bolted on. Get out. All right. Awesome. Just before I make the transmission, I think the flywheel goes up there. Maybe not. All right, so I'm going through my bolts. Normally, I'm I bag and tag everything. I did not do that on everything this time. There's evidence right there that I did with some of them, but some I just threw in the bucket and either thinking I'll get new ones or thinking that I'd be doing this at the end of the project, finding bolts. So I gave them a good scrub and uh, went ahead and put the flywheel to the back of the crank and started to search for that elusive alignment pattern that allows the flywheel to only be installed one way for balancing reasons and then I applied some Loctite and it's good that I have this on video because I'd be wondering later on if I had put uh, Loctite on all those bolts and then tightened and torqued them down because normally you know the rule is to not walk away from a loose bolt or not walk away from an untorqued bolt and uh, this is going to help me sleep at night because I can come back and watch this if, uh, if I get to thinking that uh, I didn't tighten them all or I didn't torque them all or whatever it seems like everything that gets bolted together and covered up and is a pain to get to you start to second guess yourself so these bolts all get tightened in a crisscross pattern. Follow your manual if you're going to do this. Uh, this particular engine, they're uh, 132 inch pounds, which translates to 11 foot pounds plus 50 degrees of uh, turn after that. So don't forget to set your torque wrench down to its lowest setting before you put it away. It's pretty important if you want to keep your torque wrench in calibration. So I'm getting the uh, K member in position, then I can uh, start seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. But before I do that, I'm going to weld these nuts to the K member so that if I ever have to pull this rack and pinion again, which I very well might, because if I remember right, this has got a little bit of slop in it, which is no bueno. So I went ahead and reversed these and so you can pull the bolts out from the bottom and I welded them to the K member. Now that bushing on the left there is rubber. The one on the right is actually metal. 
and uh, you got to be careful with this you don't burn the bushing or melt it yeah that one so I cleaned up all the welds spray some paint over the uh, exposed metal then I can get this ready to put the engine down on it some brake lines you have to watch out for just generally got to make sure you have clearance around uh, everywhere these brake lines have been through hell but uh, they're still brake lines and they still function as intended so maybe at some point I'll get ambitious and replace them but for now they work great and I'm gonna leave them and just be careful with them so you're basically just trying to get your uh, motor mounts lined up with your mounts that go to the engine block you put a there's a bolt in the one on the right and once the other one is lined up you can put that one in and I just finger tightened everything for this as a matter of fact all of the suspension everything needs to be torqued and gone over even that tie rod end right there is not tight and uh, these Harbor Freight uh, little dollies are great for this I don't see how you could do this without them, honestly. The exhaust I had mocked up uh, just to make sure this was going to fit. Nothing worse than getting this thing in the car only to find out that that doesn't fit. I uh, bought these from uh, eBay TCB Overstock. I think they were $149 shipped. Uh, they're stainless steel. They seem to be really good quality. But uh, that doesn't help much when the passenger side exhaust flange is welded on upside down. So I had to make some clearances in there and drill some new holes, but it actually did work. I got away with one there. Uh, TCB Overstock did not want to uh, help me out with that in any way, shape, or form. So I will not buy anything from them again. So here's the car with the hoist attached at the front. It's not up anywhere near as high as it needs to be, but uh, at this point I've got the engine down on the K-member and I'm looking at uh, pulling the transmission. So the transmission is pretty easy to drop down. If you notice the uh, car moving above, that's because it's hanging from the hoist and the rear end is uh, differential is up on jack stands. You got to get this car up pretty high to get this uh, engine and transmission combo out. And normally they come out together. Whoops. Like an idiot, I pulled the engine out thinking it would be easier than uh, pulling out the whole K member and transmission. That is not the case. And I don't recommend doing it this way. So the normally you just lift the whole car off and pull the engine, transmission, K-member all in one shot. That is by far the easiest. You can see how I'm struggling here to get the uh, transmission made it up. I've done a lot of editing to uh, edit out the uh, swear words, the uh, misalignment. This is actually makes it look really easy. I wish it was that easy. But uh, there was a little bit of uh, adjustments and uh, a little bit of a learning curve getting those set up because obviously I do not have exactly what I need to make that easy. Uh, if I did this every day, I would have exactly what I needed to make sure this went quickly. It's time is money. So here I'm connecting the uh, transmission fill tube. That goes right to the back of the head. And now with the engine and transmission mated and bolted up, I'm ready to slide it under the car. Now again, the uh, this is not that easy. And the mistake I made here was with this particular hoist, it works if you connect your sling or your chains to the front bolt of the sway bar, the sway bar mount. I've taken the sway bar off, so I've got those two bolts there, one on each side, and if you connect the sling to those two sides, it lifts the car up just fine, and it makes it easy to slide this under. However, 
I've got it. I've got the stupid cardboard box in the way. So uh, with the engine hoist sitting on it, it was almost impossible to get out of there. So I had to remove it. So this is how it goes in, just little by little, inch by inch, and you only raise the car enough to get this to go under. You don't want to go crazy lifting this thing up because the back is just sitting on jack stands, and if you bump it or something, you don't want something uh, horrible to happen. And uh, what you're trying to do basically is lowering it down as soon as it clears and trying to get these uh, strut mounts to line up inside the wheel well with with the uh, bolt holes and try and get those lined up and of course now I'm uh, starting to think about that uh, 90 degree elbow on the back of the supercharger because that is my main clearance issue and uh, the transmission is basically just along for the ride at this point and as you lower the car down it uh, gets a little bit more tricky with uh, you know cables getting in the way your brake lines you don't want anything to get bound up and bent your uh, dipstick for your oil um, that's pretty much it I've got a AC compressor on the other side I've got supported that's going to be an issue in a minute and uh, um, it is pretty much just touch and go, little by little, but it, it goes pretty good. Little by little, little by little, it goes in, and you're, you're, it looks like I'm raising the engine, but I'm actually lowering the car. With the AC out of the way, I can go ahead and uh, just keep dropping it down little by little by little till, uh, till it fits in. So right now, the intake is right up against the firewall. As I suspected, I just wasn't sure how far off we were going to be. So. From what I can tell, this is where your bolt goes through into this nut plate. We are going to need an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Maybe just, yeah, about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Got to get out the hammer. So I worked on the firewall a little bit and in lowering the car down the 90 degree elbow on the back of the supercharger broke off. There's just no room back there whatsoever. That's what you can see at the bottom middle of the screen is the broken uh, intake elbow along with the tube there. So come to find out there's like no room in between the supercharger and the firewall even the small little EGR valve tube is really sandwiched in there so this is what we got stay tuned for more to see how we're gonna fix this thanks for watching